And one of the major issue is uh, water scarcity. All the three factors. Mm. So very, very small way we can understand. You know, it's very common sense. Any more deeper, I think we will get oil, but not water. <laughs> that is the kind of situation we have in the remote city. Actually, the fresh water which can be consumed by us, which is available, is... And one of the major issue is uh, water scarcity, you know, which 20 years back, 30 years back, there was no talks and there is nothing. And people even go to a house and, uh, uh, you know, in, in villages, if I'm talking about, and, uh, they, they, they play around and come back and then in any house, they'll get in and then ask for water and they'll give it. Okay. Now it becomes commercial, like uh, 10 rupees, 20 rupees. Now it is, I think, more than that. So more and more commercialization, commercialization at one end. And one more thing is we waste water also at a, a larger extent. Do we have any measurement tool or technique to uh, you know, measure this kind of an activity to avoid? Of course, conscious efforts to tap all the, you know, all the water, but do you have any tools or techniques to avoid uh, yes, water yes. saving Now I am part of an entity called Jal Smriti. Okay. Jal Smriti believes in this three. It is not just about saving water. Mm -hmm. It is the Jal Jungle Jamain Trio, we call it. So okay. water and uh, you know our uh, capability to manage water will be depending on all the three factors. The, the forestry that we have, making sure we have enough trees and then the soil Make sure that you know there is some percolation happening because if all concrete roads and concrete buildings, where will the water go? That is why today flooding is happening in all the urban cities. Earlier, we used to have wells in every house, even in cities. Mm. I remember yes. growing up, yes. there was a well in my house. There mm. was no concrete around my house. There was a lot of soil. There were a lot of plants. We had everybody had a garden. Now you have huge high rises, apartments. Everything is cemented for parking. There is not even a you know single way in which the water can percolate down. Correct. So managing the trees, managing the green cover, managing water percolation into the soil, mm -hmm. and then whatever water is available, managing that. So all the three mm -hmm. are a combination. So that is why mm -hmm. in Jal Smriti Foundation, we have very simple assessments. We have something called rapid assessments, uh, whether it is for an apartment complex or whether it is for an individual house or whether it is for a commercial entity. We give very small scorecard you know, indicators uh -huh. where they can measure how much of water, where it is coming in, from where they are getting their water, whether it is from the deep bore wells or whether it is from a tanker, where are they getting the water from? How much of water is being consumed for what purposes? Uh -huh. Where is the water going? Where is the major waste happening? For example, when I took this assessment, it just took me 15 minutes to assess uh -huh. my building and look at my kitchen sink and my shower tap, they were the ones which had the maximum water flow. Oh. It was very simple. You know, how many seconds so does it take? Specifically identify, water? is it? Okay. Yeah, you can simply, for example, you, know, you can take a one liter water bottle and mm -hmm. uh, open it and check on your uh, mobile phone or your uh, watch how many seconds it is taking for filling that one liter bottle when you open the tap. Uh -huh. Whether it is for your brushing in your faucet or whether it's your shower or whether it's your kitchen sink or your utensil sink. The moment you check, you will know where the water is flowing most. Oh. Actually, you don't need that much water to flow there. Mm -hmm. So having a small tablet can adjust it and reduce the flow so that you can reduce the wastage for washing your hands, washing vessels. If you take the maids, you know, they'll come and open the tap and continuously they'll be washing the vessels. Right. The tap will be right. going on. When you're brushing your teeth, water will be going in the sink. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how are the small, small things we measure where it is going waste? Then automatically mm -hmm. so i found out that my two of my taps had the highest flow so how can i mm -hmm. reduce that then i also found that i am wasting a lot of water watering my garden okay so immediately i put one uh, measurement and so okay this is how, how much of water i'm wasting every day for my 30 40 plants so immediately mm -hmm. that uh, tube was put so that there can be a drip irrigation and minimal mm -hmm. water is you know used as and when required so very, very small way we can understand, you know, it's very common sense, but we also have some very scientific tools, especially mm -hmm. for uh, bigger buildings and organizations to check how they can manage their input and all. This way we can uh, save a lot of water because we have to remember mm -hmm. the actual fresh water available. You know, mm -hmm. If you take uh, all the water that is available in the world, if you think it is, uh, you know, a bottle of water, actually the fresh water which can be consumed by us, which is available, is a quarter teaspoon. 
my god <laughs> that is the alarming levels of what is available out there and what is available as portable safe drinking water so mm. we need to be really more than waste because waste is very tangible mm. water is not tangible you know it come it is coming in the tanker or it is coming from your bore you just whatever is available you are using it you are washing your car you are washing everything a lot of waste is happening without our knowledge mm. so when we just focus on okay this is something that is going to be really creating a lot of challenge for us how many bore wells you know some of the cities where we are working in the bore wells are about 2000 2300 feet deep mm-hmm. any more deeper i think we will get oil but not water <laughs> that is the kind of situation we have in true. some of the cities so true true mm-hmm. fine makes a lot of sense uh, see when we are in a mission like we also need to uh, you know take care of our funding financing and all that uh, so as a business when we are running questions will be asked on on how this been funding and what is the profit and all that right uh, so when you started maybe you started as a serving purpose but when you converted into a business or training coaching kind of thing uh, how long it took you for a, a breakthrough yes okay so this activity i made and this i made a profit do you have such kind of instances my my focus from the beginning because i was always considering myself as a social entrepreneur looking mm-hmm. at the community challenges rather than profit as the motive mm-hmm. then after losing a lot of money i realized that passion mm-hmm. is something that is good it is very nice to work with your passion but at the end of the day when money doesn't come in you know it creates mm-hmm. a lot of stress for you Correct. so when you talk about a sustainable environment you also have to talk about a sustainable you know work environment so mm-hmm. you can only sustain your passion for your work only when you know all your expenses are covered you don't have mm-hmm. to make a major profit but you need to at least make sure that you are able to make the ends meet mm-hmm. with a little bit of you know extra for your efforts so mm-hmm. when i started my education project you would not believe it taken almost 7 years for me to break so oh. you know, i i was uh, in hyderabad you have this iit you have this medicine entrance you know it is you know very very uh, what you call that, common everybody is competing for iit seats everybody is competing for neat seats so a lot of proliferation of coaching classes children are studying from morning to evening you know even adults don't work so hard children are working mm-hmm. for 18 hours 16 hours every day young children in high school so mm-hmm. when we started our education project we said okay we will give an alternate idea where we will only teach thinking skills okay. it is not about ranks marks and you know grabbing seats it is about can you think and solve problems because mm-hmm. as a student that is what you need first you need to understand that you know you can have whatever skills you have you can mm. think and solve the problems around you that would be without any dependability you. without any tool without any google without any other uh, dependency of uh, resources okay mm-hmm. so thinking skills is the premium so we started you know uh, promoting that in a very small way we opened up in our house and then slowly okay. grew a lot of parents who were interested in the concept said yes okay it's not just about marks and ranks it's not just about you know grabbing a seat in a college it is about how they are going to live their lives so they mm. understood they came through so it has taken us 7 years for us to break through sometimes mm-hmm. we had to sell our jewelry sometimes we had to you know borrow to invest and things like that mm-hmm. when it come to environment also the same thing happened we started doing wherever people used to call us we used to go offer our services so many of the times the the kind of fee they used to pay would not even cover our transportation and boarding lodging expenses mm-hmm. so this was going on for a long time and then fortunately i had uh, also went i went back to college because one of the things i believe in is continuous learning so mm-hmm. how do i become a better business person how do i even run my social enterprise you know in a more sustainable fashion i got mm-hmm. a seat in uh, an mba in uh, university then i went to college learned about some of the business management techniques so how you should spend on what you should spend what is break even point how much of money you spend on marketing how much of money you spend on networking how should you look at you know the balance sheet and things like that so i started learning it the hard way right from the experiences i had and also from my education started putting in taking the help of experts so now mm-hmm. i know that when i design a project you know what is going to be the cost that is going mm-hmm. to be involved in terms of the human resources in terms of all the other expenditure and how much of a benefit the client is going to get from mm-hmm. being associated with us so you show the value for the client that you know you save this many lakhs at the end of the year mm-hmm. and we are asking you a minuscule part of that right. as a return for our service 
So when mm-hmm. people see the value, they never ask for discount. They never mm-hmm. ask for any consideration. They know that they are getting something better. Mm-hmm. They are ready to, you know, give you whatever you ask for. So that was a big surprise for me. I always thought, what will people think if I ask, you know, such a big sum? Then mm-hmm. I realized that whatever they are losing is ten times more than what mm-hmm. they are ready to pay me. So they are very mm-hmm. happy to pay me what I am asking for because they can see mm-hmm. the value in what we are doing. So that way. slowly we started scaling up our business so now we know exactly what to do for the client and the client knows what is the benefit they are getting and they are able to uh, give us whatever we are asking so that way we are able to keep our profits still that is not our motive but we are able mm-hmm. to keep it such a way that it is a sustainable operation wonderful wonderful i mean 7 years is a huge time to get a breakthrough like you know the upcoming entrepreneurs are even restless uh, to see breakthrough in 7 months but you see even investors <laughs> even investors when we started my uh, first training organization I remember in chennai 2015 mm-hmm. 17 years back mm-hmm. it was called roots and rings we had some friends investing about 2 lakhs in that and mm-hmm. then for the first 6 months we didn't get a single order mm-hmm. we were running no helter skelter we were going making presentations talking to people creating brochures printing brochures talk networking all sorts of things we were doing for 6 months we did not get a single claim my god one small order came from satyam that time there was satyam mm. they gave one small order that's it mm. in 6 months we had nothing to show except salaries oh. and expenses and travel and all and the, and the, the investors pulled the plug they said no we mm. can't support you anymore Mm-hmm. looks like this is not working so immediately mm-hmm. they removed the funding so oh. we said what to do so we cut closed our office we sent all the people we had to let go of all the people who had done the good work so oh, only no. me and my partner were there you will not believe after the 8th month they kept calling us and giving us orders <laughs> okay from 8th month to 18th month whatever we had spent and whatever we had struggled for in the first 6 months we reaped uh-huh. 10 times the business oh Wow. So one of the things i would like to tell young business people is don't be impatient right right stay Excellent. don't quit mm. if you're doing something it takes time to grow nothing mm. happens overnight that only happens in the movies in the mm. movies you know the hero comes and starts something then he becomes a billionaire no in real life you need to nurture you need to build value you need to show mm. you need mm. to demonstrate you need to win the trust of your clients mm. that is going to take long time people should know that you're going to be there Mm-hmm. Whether you are getting business or not, they should know where to find you. They should know Amazing. what you are doing. They should mm-hmm. keep seeing you. Mm-hmm. They should be keep hearing about what you are doing, the work that you are doing. Then mm-hmm. they will start giving you the business. So I also was very disappointed. Then I learned mm-hmm. this lesson that staying the extra mile, mm-hmm. putting in a little more creative effort, mm-hmm. networking a little more. Mm-hmm. That is how you, know, you slowly start getting the traction. i have learned mm. it the hard way and if somebody is out there wanting to start i will only tell them be persistent be consistent mm. it's only a matter of time inspiring very very inspiring and uh, i mean this is a major problem which uh, many of us face where we lose consistency in 6 months or 1 year down the line and uh, we think of jumping into different uh, field just because we have not uh, got any immediate success great um see any kind of a business needs promotions marketing lead magnets you know creating awareness all that but coaching and training industry needs lot of personal branding and a different a set of um, educating the people is required especially yours is highly aware where people don't even realize we you have to start educating and then selling that's a kind of uh, a domain or function which you are so what kind of promotion strategies helped you uh, which was very very successful and what didn't work well okay uh, when it comes to the uh, government consulting they already have a mechanism called iec they call it information education communication uh huh they were spending a lot of money iec for them is printing pamphlets and distributing mosquito okay. mane is dengue you print a pamphlet you distribute it that's all that is iec for them is communicating the information that is all okay so they will create an awareness that's all ha uh, that is all so they think you know okay awareness building taking a rally making mm. banners making posters making stickers mm. you know making big big hoardings this is what is awareness generation according to them okay, but people okay. don't get educated just okay. by listening or seeing something once mm. so we 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 stopped thinking like iec we told them okay iec is going to work only for certain level mm. we need to do bcc behavior change communication 
Mm -hmm. So for that, you need a different strategy. So we showed them what works and what doesn't work. So something mm -hmm. that is, you know, uh, temporary, you know, you go like a, any event happens, you know, you do a lot of branding, a lot of marketing. Mm -hmm. It's like a sudden rainfall, sudden mm -hmm. cloud burst. You immerse everybody that something is happening and then they all take notice. After that, everybody forgets about it. Mm -hmm. But it should be like, you know, in, in olden days, in Tamil days to say, Madam Bumari. So mm -hmm. three times a month, there used to be rain. Mm -hmm. So that means a consistent drizzle of your mm -hmm. you know, strategy should be there. There should be continuous reminders that, you know, these are the behaviors that you need to work on. So it takes 21 days to 45 days for somebody to change their habit. Um, that persistence should be there. One pamphlet mm -hmm. is not going to do the job. So we mm -hmm. work on the behavior change principles. We work on mm -hmm. the habit formation principles. Mm -hmm. And that has given a lot of results. I did not even know about lead magnets and mm -hmm. all these things till pandemic struck. Once I started doing my online coaching training, that's when I understood that there is a funnel. You offer something free. You then have a lead magnet to capture mm -hmm. your potential clients. A mechanism you wise, you're, you're not aware. Mm -hmm. I was not even aware. Earlier, mm -hmm. there used to be things like, you know, only client to client hookup. That was the only yeah. thing that worked for me. Mm -hmm. We go, you know, become members in Experience. forums. Mm -hmm. We go and, uh, you know, uh, talk to communities, business mm -hmm. communities, networking uh, you know, events. That is how we used to go and meet people. Correct. And one satisfied client will automatically put you onto another satisfied client. Mm -hmm. So you will not believe that for 16 years, I did not have a visiting card. <laughs> no visiting okay. card. Okay. Only one client to another client. Uh -huh. With uh, God's grace, you know, business because, you know, when a satisfied client refers, you know, you don't mm. have to do any marketing, presentation, True. lead magnet, nothing. Mm. They're already asking you, okay, this is the job mm. I'm going to give you. How much is going to cost? You like the mm. deal? Deal is tough. As simple as that. Mm -hmm. You know, that was how it was operating for more than yes. a decade for me. Almost yes. one and a half decades it was operating like that. So okay. wherever people called, I used to go. And because I cannot disappoint my client, I had to accept sometimes even I don't want to do some work because mm -hmm. a very good client has given reference. I can't say no. Mm -hmm. So it is it is like, you know, I choose the client whether mm -hmm. I want to do the work or not. It has become that much. Two, three mm -hmm. people calling at the same time, huh. whom to go to. So I, it has become like that only because of the power of networking. Okay. So I believe okay. that you do good work and mm -hmm. your clients start, you know, doing the marketing for you. Mm -hmm. But when I started my business ventures, I used to, you know, spend a lot of money on marketing, branding, sometimes mm -hmm. even 25%, which was not called for. Then I realized that in the initial stages, it is required. People should know mm -hmm. who you mm -hmm. are, where you are, what you are, how to mm -hmm. reach you. Mm -hmm. Because there are millions of people out there trying to do something similar to you. Maybe you have something very different. So how mm -hmm. do people find you? So initially, it may be very high, but mm -hmm. you should... You should know when to, you know, use the other uh, traditional methods also to network and get you business mm -hmm. so that you can reduce your marketing and branding costs. Anywhere between 5 to 10%, I think, is reasonable given today's competition. We don't mm -hmm. have to go overboard. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, for the last, uh, my academy is now 15 years old. It is in the mm -hmm. 16th year. From starting from 25%, now it is down to 5%. Mm -hmm. We don't spend more than 5% on our branding because our... Okay. For, for 15 years, whoever has passed through, whoever is happy, they're automatically bringing in the new. Right. They're just doing that 5% to still make sure that anybody new out there knows that there is an entity like this. That's it. Mm -hmm. my, my next question was that only what was the ideal budget which you have already communicated that, you know, 5 to 10%, which is, which is, is it we are really working on that way? Like uh, 5 to 10% of budgeting for marketing really works? For my, for my mature uh, offerings, you know, if you look at some mm -hmm. of the... Uh, operations that we are doing, whether it is in, in our education business or environment business, where we already have set of clients, something is going, you know, very smoothly, we are mm -hmm. spending that. Now, mm -hmm. I'm also looking at the future, looking at mm -hmm. some more new business ventures mm -hmm. is in the offering, where definitely the cost may go up to 10 to 15 or even 20%. Mm -hmm. Because okay. initial stages, we need to spend more. Correct. Correct. We have to factor mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so when we are in a uh, business, like we will have to wear multiple hats, uh, you know, every, uh, we will, we will be front ending the entire show, right from top to bottom, uh, all that. But as you progress, 
what was the main role you took up and what are the other roles which you have dedicated so that business runs in a its own systematic mechanism okay most of my businesses are very small we have a very small team mm-hmm. maybe 10 to 12 that's it whether okay. we're doing 10 crores of turnover or we're doing 2 crores of turnover most of our projects are very we believe in lean management we don't have a big hierarchy of you know different positions and different levels we are a, almost a flat organization where most of the main strategic decisions are taken by the heads either it is me or my partner even my wife is entirely taking care of single handedly the entire education business because she is empowered now she's got all the tools required so we we allow the decision making to happen at the top and all the others support staff around them they are giving all the inputs and they are giving all their ideas so we make sure that one person is responsible for one thing okay and more than one then we start away straight away start delegating those responsibilities so that mm-hmm. people who are actually at the field they are able to take the decisions themselves you know we believe Wonderful. in responsibility with power so when you don't okay. give the power then you are not actually delegating you are only giving them assigning work so mm-hmm. we assign work and we also assign them the power to make decisions they may make mm-hmm. mistakes but that's how they learn we all made oh. mistakes that's how we learned and that's how we started making good decisions so the only way to do take good decisions is to take bad decisions <laughs> and we need to sometime allow where allow. it is possible our people down the line to make some bad decisions mm-hmm. and make sure we have a plan b or a plan c to cover it up mm-hmm. my god i mean that's a great uh, insight like you know uh, responsibility with power is something very many people may not be accommodating this kind of a concept where we are you have boldly you know giving that uh, possibility uh but having talked about mistakes right so what is the top five mistakes you made in your entire journey <laughs> um getting into a business which is which i have zero domain expertise i have done okay. that and i have burnt my fingers so that's okay that will be my top one mistake mm-hmm. second mistake is not having the patience and perseverance as i had you know explained in my case where i had to close my shop let go of my good people and then found out that suddenly business started coming and suddenly searching for people to become part of my team so not being persistent enough not having the kind of self belief to go the extra mile that mistake i have done often okay and, uh, many times uh, thinking that discounts and uh, giving something perks will attract more clients I always mm-hmm. found that it is the value that you give to your client that attracts them nothing no other gimmicks so i have done a lot of gimmicks and wasted a lot of time okay <laughs> this would be my top 3 mistakes i have made wonderful and, uh, and micromanaging i have before i wow. learned start of giving or delegating powers mm-hmm. being a self employed for some time trying lot of things and failing i was very afraid of the decisions mm-hmm. i used to take so i used to micromanage everything mm-hmm. and then i realized that it is not necessary you don't have to oh. micromanaging you can allow probably people will surprise you once you give people a chance to do something they may even do it better than you True. they can surprise you so they may come mm-hmm. up with an entirely new concept mm-hmm. so being open minded from being mm-hmm. closed minded to being open minded and mm-hmm. taking inputs from others mm-hmm. which i didn't do earlier so that was one of the mistake these mm-hmm. are all the mistakes i think i have done and i have learned the hard way mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. people can avoid makes sense makes sense like <laughs> no, it gives a lot of insight to avoid uh, from the upcoming entrepreneurs and uh, in a business scenario uh, see the customer change uh, needs changes on a daily basis right so yesterday they talk about something and their needs are something different today their needs are ch- something different but as a business we cannot keep on changing on a daily basis right so but do, in your domain especially this i'm talking in generic way for, for all the products and services but in your field do you have that uh, option of uh, or have you seen the changing customer needs and how you have you have adopted to that changing needs of a customer yes i think the pandemic has brought in that sweeping change but nobody was prepared okay now, these are the things that happen once in a while sometimes you see customers are leaving you consistently for somebody else mm-hmm. that is the one thing that can happen you can uh, understand that slowly slowly you can see some people are dropping off that mm-hmm. should actually your antenna should be you know very much tuned to that because mm-hmm. when a customer takes their business away from you to someone else mm-hmm. they are actually giving you a feedback indirectly right they are not happy right. with something that you're doing or i'm not happy with your offering there is something mm. that is 
more making me more happy so making yourself available to your customers sometimes they will not give you we do surveys we take feedback but many times uh, customers don't tell anything they seem very happy they are always mm. with you and suddenly they are leaving mm. so that is that is the first thing that our antenna should be very alert okay because once many more customers start leaving then you can be fired if you are a ceo mm. or anything it doesn't matter mm. you automatically lose your business so being very uh, sensitive to subtle changes mm. why a customer is going away so sometimes they will not say you will have to do your own research right so i believe in that sentence when they say you have to create your future you don't have mm. to wait for something to happen mm-hmm. and because i am a change and transformation coach myself i believe that being very lean being very flexible being very sensitive and being very sharp to whatever is happening around you it's very important now if you looked at uh, my own academy it was an offline course which was for 14 years it was happening offline when the pandemic struck nobody could come the teachers couldn't come the students couldn't come we had to immediately go for an online thing we could seamlessly do that because my building all the classrooms were already connected with internet with wifi okay so we had already okay. invested in technology lcd projectors uh-huh. so we we have whatever is the next step whatever is the future you have to look around and do your own research and start adopting mm-hmm. so when you want to be ready for change most mm-hmm. of the time what happens is you have to be the change before the change happens mm-hmm. you have to preempt that is why if you read the book who moved my cheese mm-hmm. lot of symptoms are there lot of signs are there how change is happening sometimes mm-hmm. it could be very sudden but mm-hmm. are you prepared even when suddenly something happens are you able to quickly respond to it instead mm-hmm. of complaining or instead of being crushed so that is one mm-hmm. second thing is planned you know change mm-hmm. you know many technologies become obsolescent many things don't people don't want anymore they are looking for something else looking for something better so you should be able to actually research and show to your clients uh-huh. is this something that you want to adopt this is mm-hmm. something that's come up by adopting this technology or by adopting this technique you will be able to save this will be the effect on the bottom line so you should be able to actually show what can happen if you adopt a change because mm-hmm. when people are ready to change at the top level also people who are you know in the entire organization institutionalizing the change is very important because that is where the resistance is mm-hmm. so talking to people how it is going to benefit them convincing them and uh, taking their ideas making them part of the change process these uh-huh. are all the ways in which we can succeed because mm-hmm. whatever we study whatever we are alert to there are certain uh, times and when change you know just sweeps across okay. so we can either be a victim of change or we can be a master of change that depends on having a mindset that everything is going to change change is the only constant so let mm-hmm. us be ready so okay. when you are ready then you are like an ever ready battery you just plug in and then mm-hmm. you still are working that's it mm-hmm. no it's very surprising that you are prepared for a change uh, even during pandemic because that was a hard hit for most of the organization who have not implemented the online working way especially especially the non it companies fmcg companies who are not uh, even prepared because their logistics is too dependent on the physical movement where seven the, years uh, back as much as yeah. six seven years back i used to mm-hmm. get uh, you know programs i used to do in uh webex uh-huh. from corporates from cognizant from you know city bank from different other corporates i started doing online webex sessions because mm-hmm. the the participants are from all across the country all across the globe so the it mm-hmm. companies used to cut cost by you know instead of sending me to delhi or mumbai mm-hmm. they used to so my building was wired because i had already adopted a future way of blended learning wonderful not only i go to the company to train Mm-hmm. their facility i also sit in my house and train so those were the days when skype and webex you know were hardly anybody used to. yes 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 and because i was using it i know mm-hmm. that it is going to come future is going to be like this uh-huh. so in a in a way without knowing sometimes what happens is you get opportunities to adopt the next level mm-hmm. and when you adopt that when you are ready in your mind to adopt that you will not be bothered with change you will be always ready for this fantastic i mean that's a great insight and talking about technology what kind of technology or market trends you foresee in your own industry or domain yeah now the talk of the town is 5g we are all waiting for the 5g to take over 
I believe the bandwidth is going to be massive. We are going to do so many things. In my own space, if we look at right now, whatever we are doing, whether it is in education or environment, we use technology very much mm -hmm. to track whatever is happening at the micro level. So we have apps to make sure that the people on the field are entering the data so that we sit at home, we're able to monitor the data. Where is the thing going wrong? What's happening? We're able to pinpoint because mm -hmm. of the mobile phone. No mobile phone is there with everybody. Mm -hmm. Right from the sweeper to the commissioner, you know, you have all the people having. So it is very easy for you to develop applications and track mm -hmm. so that you can always give the best to your client and do some mm -hmm. firefighting if required or do some you know, improvement that is required. Now, if 5G is going to come, now look mm -hmm. at the kind of bandwidth that's going to be available to you, the IoT tools that are going to be available to you, where you can start incorporating the small, small devices in all the things, in the vehicles, mm -hmm. in all the you know machinery. So you will get real time upload and download of massive amounts of data. I think the decision maker is going to become very smarter because of that. So the, the world is going to be adopting a lot more technology because of the 5G that's going to come up. It's going to be very exciting and we are preparing for that. But how do you think for your domain that could help? Uh, it's it's common for everybody for various scalability, but for your kind of uh, waste management, environment, uh, sustainability, how do you think this would uh, help? It will, because now, right now, as I told you, we have an application where when people are looking at collection that is happening, the entire ward, if there are about 300, 400 horses, in that ward, how much is being collected? The person who is in charge for that is entering in the app in real time as it's happening in the morning. When okay, they are doing okay. the communication program in a school or when they are talking to somebody about how they got it mixed, that is going live. We are getting the live videos, mm -hmm. with a little time delay. Now mm -hmm. imagine when 5G is there, we can actually, you know, keep these devices where the vehicle that is collecting can record the video instead of somebody entering in the mobile phone, it uh -huh. will automatically record. And then I can okay. use an audio device from here. If I can see what is happening, I can mm -hmm. send my voice command sitting at home here, Wonderful. hundreds of miles Wonderful. away. Mm -hmm. So I can track the video. I can uh, use multimedia to talk to people there on the field. Now. Mm -hmm. The kind of bandwidth that's going to improve is going to help me actually, mm. you know, run my services better. Mm. Now, if a processing is happening, let us mm -hmm. say composting is happening in a heap, I can have devices, IoT devices will tell you exactly what is the temperature, what needs okay. to be added, what needs to be removed. And mm -hmm. if I have a processing of resource recovery uh, where, you know, paper, plastic, everything is being, you know, separated. Now, this information will tell me how much of paper I got collected today, how much of plastic. Everything can be done with technology. Now it is being mm -hmm. manually done, weighed, bailed, and then it is entered. Now mm -hmm. imagine you have the next generation technology where everything is automatically recorded and sent. Mm -hmm. Incredible. So, okay. Mm -hmm. It's going to be it's going to be massive benefit for us. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, now after a serious talks on business technology, now we are entering into a fun part of it where we have a rapid fire uh, session where I need a very honest sure. uh, answer. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, shall we begin? Sure, I'm ready. I'm ever ready, as you said. <laughs> okay. What is the best advice you have ever got? Uh, the best advice I got from my parents oh. is don't listen to anybody, listen to your heart. <laughs> Wonderful. And what was the worst advice? Worst advice, of course, uh, is, you know, you cannot change the world by doing these small, small things. You don't think you can succeed. People mm. always are, there are two types of people who say, you cannot change the world because they are afraid that you will actually go and do and succeed. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are people who think, you know, these small, small things don't make a difference. They're very negative. So mm -hmm. these advices, sometimes, you know, we become prey to these negative inputs. So I try to be away from that. Very good. Very good. What have you learned from your uh, business failures? A lot. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, when I started my first few ventures, in central government, mm -hmm. when I started my business with partners, I learned mm -hmm. that it is failure and success are not two opposites. Uh -huh. Failure is a part of the journey. And uh, even though I was prepared, I know that there's going to be some hardships, but some of the mm -hmm. times it was very difficult. So mm -hmm. failing fast, failing early, failing forward, failing often, all these helped me to become more resilient, mm -hmm. bounce back, because in sales and marketing, they say, no. You make 100 calls, 99 people say no, and then you still have the energy to ask 100% and then you succeed. So mm -hmm. 
So the resilience, the bouncing back is important. But I also heard of another concept which uh -huh. GE uses very much is getting first time right. So I thought okay. if you have to succeed, you'll have to fail. Even mm -hmm. that, I think, was a misconception. You don't have uh -huh. to always fail to succeed. If so you are able to plan, mm -hmm. yeah, if you are able to plan, if you are able to prioritize, if you are able to take uh, different experts, and mm -hmm. if you are able to talk to your mentor, because there are mm -hmm. people who have already traveled the path, they know what is going to happen. They so, can foresee, they can predict, mm -hmm. they can mm -hmm. forecast. So when you mm -hmm. do all those things, you can still get whatever you do right the very first time. So that uh -huh. is one big lesson I learned. That wonderful. failure is always not essential to succeed. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to social media, Instagram or LinkedIn? Instagram. <laughs> I, I still consider myself a youth. Even okay. though I am uh, getting into the uh, late 50s, okay. uh, I should be more on LinkedIn, but I am okay. actually more on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Digital marketing or networking? Networking. Discount offers or value addition? Value. Always seeing value. Investment in business automation or self learn Both. There is no scope of this or that because learning is something that is part and parcel continuous for me. Daily mm -hmm. continuous learning. I invest a lot on my learning. And mm -hmm. automation is very exciting because I'm a technology manager. I forecast mm -hmm. a lot of technologies. I love to do the next thing. Mm -hmm. Long term branding or immediate sales? Long term. Outsourcing the work or do it yourself? Both. Because many of the times, as I already told you, there are things that uh, if somebody can do it better, I outsource it. Uh -huh. I, but whatever has to be done only by me, I do it myself. I don't come up with any excuses. <laughs> wonderful that's the end of the rapid question so wonderfully made and uh, to the point <laughs> yeah so um we are almost at the end of the uh, session so uh, what kind of an advice you want to give to the upcoming entrepreneurs budding entrepreneurs on things which they have to do and things they have to avoid okay. uh, first thing is always look at what is your passion what your heart says and the then you process with your logical mind whether you are able to convert your passion, the fun that you want to have and enjoy your life, whether it is going to also feed you and it's going to win you your bread. Because without that, it is very easy to get into the stress syndrome, very easy to get burnt out. But if you get up every day with the same zeal and enjoy what you're doing, normally you are able to manage. It's not that you're, there won't be stress, but you will enjoy the performance anxiety. Mm -hmm. So that is very important for you to align your passion and your business purpose and your business goals. Second is always to put impact and influence first than you are worrying about returns of investment and investment and profits. Because when you make the people around you happy and you are able to impact people positively, invariably it is going to bring you lots of riches. So these two things would be my top uh, uh, inputs for people who want to start a business. The third thing is, as I already told you, you don't have to worry about failure or success. You don't have to worry about whether you're going to get it right or wrong. You have to take action because all you are strategizing, all you are theorizing, all you are learning will be of any help unless you take action. So jump in, start swimming, whether you get a boat or whether you get a life jacket, grab onto it, keep moving forward, be persistent and even when you have setbacks, make sure your goal is always, your eye is always on the goal so that it keeps motivating you because when you are consistent and persistent, miracles happen. Very true. Very true. And uh, what yeah. I need to avoid, if I ask mm -hmm. me, as I told you, I avoid when somebody tells me this is not to do, this is, it cannot be done. If mm -hmm. People start giving negative inputs. Mm -hmm. If there is a truth in it, if mm -hmm. there is a feedback which is actionable, this mm -hmm. is what I call mm -hmm. feed forward. If it is something mm -hmm. that I can take forward and actually use it, then I take it. Otherwise, okay. immediately discard it. Mm -hmm. Try to immediately discard it because it's very important. Mm -hmm. The environment around us has mm -hmm. an influence on our thinking. So True. when you have a negative environment, when you encourage being in a negative environment, most often it you know, actually depresses you. So to avoid that, that is the mm -hmm. only advice I would say to avoid. Other than that, if we follow the first three tips, which I think I have been doing, I'm sure all of us can be very successful. 
Because mm-hmm. when we add value, when we are persistent, when we create and we want to create positive impact on people around us, there is no way that we cannot succeed. We will always succeed. Mm-hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. That's a very positive and hopeful uh, uh, aspect of our upcoming entrepreneur. And um, uh, the people who are a potential customer or a, you know, potential collaboration partners, how should they approach you? Do you have a website? Do you have a, a one-to-one calling session or what exactly? Maybe after this video, how they should approach you and what kind of a system process which you implement to get, in, get, al- get along with uh, those people? Yeah, in terms of our uh, government uh, contacts, you know that we have a very niche market. So uh, we have the networks in place where people who are wanting to contact us, they want to work with their cities or Gram Panchayas or their temple town. So I have worked with Tirupati. I have worked with Sri Salem Temple Town, made them award winning. And then I have worked with Gram Panchayats, very small, where they can you know manage their uh, challenges. I have worked with cities of 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs population. I have done mm-hmm. a... Um, what do you call the Guinness World Record for recycling for Paimbatore along uh-huh. with my team. So uh, people in that space know me. They contact me because of my networks and my credentials being in this area for a long time. When it comes to education, again, as I told you, my education institution is uh, 16 years old as of now. So we have our own mechanism where people know where we are and what we cater to. We have a very small uh, you know, community where we cater to who are interested in this thinking skills program. So these are the things, uh, if it comes to my personal coaching, uh, I have all my uh, link tree links already shared with you. I am there in most of the things, including in LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. People, you just Google my name, you can get me. Because I'm an author, I have worked with a lot of government projects. If you just Google my name, you will get somewhere all my leads to contact me. By God's grace, the work that I have done in the past two, three decades has you know, made it easy to find me online. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Makes a lot of sense, makes a lot of sense. So all the very best for your future endeavors and hopefully this is a great mission. Uh, this is not a regular business where we think about selling, selling kind of thing, where, but you are in a mission to transform the entire world where uh, you are instrumental in certain changes, which you have already demonstrated and succeeded, which is a very uh, positive factor, which many of the people when they start uh, may not uh, sustain for a very long time. And then they, they become part of a volunteering program. And that's all their life ends with uh, this kind of a program. But you have a greater mission to achieve where uh, a lot of people have to support you. And uh, uh, that way, it should be very hopefully working towards uh, greater success. So all the very best to you. And uh, hopefully, we'll have uh, good interactions. Thank you. With each other. thank you for your kind words. And thank you for having me on your channel. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.